Good afternoon, folks. This is another episode of Rico Rants. Um, and today we're going to talk about the left. Sorry if I don't look too well. I'm uh, not feeling great. Not feeling great at all. God, I can see the bags in my eyes. Ugh. Anyways, let's talk about some stuff. So I saw, I'm going to link it in the description so you can see it yourselves. You know, I saw a uh, clip by apparently the Chapo guys. I don't listen to them at all for anything, but it interested me. And I saw my conclusion from listening to both clips. Ooh. Well, that was a bunch of lazy, defeatist nonsense. Some kernels of truth in there, but not really. Not very much. Very overly simplistic and lazy. So let's let's address some of those things. I wrote them down, uh, broader points. So I'd like to address them. Please stick with me. And again, I'm sorry. I am dragging ass right now. But I got to put this out now while I have the focus enough to do it. Like my body may be worn out, but I'm, I'm focused enough to do this. So I want to hurry up and get it done before I completely, uh, you know, don't want to move anymore. Um, one of the first things he noted was that we don't really think it's a coup. I don't understand, like, is it is a matter of just, like, we're just kind of, it's a fantasy to us that, that we can engage with because we effectively feel powerless otherwise, so this is just something we're just telling ourselves. That is a very dumb fucking assessment of the situation. Because... And I imagine he's saying this because you know, sub, in a subsequent point that it's not a, it wasn't really an insurrection because it's not really a threat to the, is that it wasn't really a threat to democracy because we didn't really we don't we don't actually have a democracy we've never had a democracy so I imagine what he's essentially saying is that we're projecting a grander fantasy onto what that really was because it wasn't really a threat to anything to our institutions of power to capitalism to anything so it you know we're just effectively making this out to be more than what it actually was and that belies a point like the foundation of a belief like that again you have to accept that we don't actually have a democracy in everything uh and all that was just political theater, a farce, and that it wouldn't have actually changed anything. Like that's what you effectively have to believe to believe that that insurrection wasn't really an insurrection. It wasn't really a threat to anything, and it didn't really it didn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. And if you think that, you are dead fucking wrong. Here's why. I understand the argument. I, I know that America has been effectively an oligarchy for as long as America has existed. Not really a democracy, not truly, you know? Wasn't too long ago when black people like me couldn't even vote. You know? And even after being given the right to vote, the Republican Party has gone out of their way to disenfranchise black people anyways, you know? To disenfranchise black people and poor people in general to make it as hard to vote as possible. To lessen our voting power through means of reducing us to second-class citizens, through what is being coined as the, the new Jim Crow, uh, which is basically, you know, what they do is like, if you get, uh, if you are a convict, you effectively lose your right to vote. Like this is the thing that's a constant contentious battle right now in certain states, to restore voting rights for felons. Because, yeah, you effectively become a second-class citizen if you become a felon. So 
So yeah, it's there's a lot of barriers to entry with regards to just voting alone. But that doesn't mean we're not a democracy. A deeply flawed democracy, for sure. But that doesn't mean we're not a democracy. I mean, if we weren't, then what the fuck are the people fighting to restore the voting rights for felons? What, what the fuck are they fighting for? If we're not, then what the fuck, like, what, how is it even possible for the people who are fighting for statehood for Puerto Rico and D.C.? How, how are they even able to do that? Is all that a farce? Again, are the people fighting to restore voting rights for felons, is that a farce? The people fighting for the naturalization of uh, undocumented immigrants uh, to make them, you know, full of fully fledged citizens. Is that a farce? Is all that for nothing? Is that is all that not really happening? No. It is all happening. It's not a farce. And we have made progress. Not as much as we'd like, of course, as fast as we like it. But we absolutely have made progress. And to say otherwise is absolute fucking nonsense. But going on to the next point that he brings up, this belies another thing that I presume is the real foundation, like his real issue, where he says that the closest thing we had to democracy to, to working class power uh, in the halls of government was during the New Deal, and then that got squashed. Here's the thing about that. You know, before the internet, whether or not the working class had any real uh, representatives in government was very hard to do, if not impossible. Not necessarily impossible, but it's very, very unlikely. Because for the longest time, we were effectively priced out of the system say for organ union organizations, the civil rights movement and all that, uh, forcing the, the people in power to you know, give us what we wanted. We didn't actually have any working class representatives in elected office. That's how that was before the internet. And I've said this before and I've said again that the reason why a lot uh, uh, again, the reason why the way it is or why this resulted in our government being primarily uh, filled with uh, and ran by rich people is because even though legally most people, anybody could get involved in government and you know get elected, effectively, the only people that could even run for office to even you know, get a chance to have a seat at the table were wealthy people or people who sold out to wealthy people. So rich old people and then young sellouts. That's about it. Effectively, they were the only that, that was the only way you could really get a seat at the table. You not just get a seat at the table, get a chance to get a seat at the table. I bring up the fact that just as an example, my state here in North Carolina, the the pay for a state senator is $14,000 a year. That's including per diem. I don't know anybody who could live off of that. I sure as shit couldn't live off of that. So again, the only people who can effectively run for office and then hold office are well-off people. That's how the game goes. That's how it's always gone. <sighs> Before the internet. Because now with the internet... With the crowdfunding in the way that we have now, with grassroots campaigns, you don't have to sell out anymore. I'm sure there were many in the past who sold out, you know, to had to compromise because they had to, but now you don't have to anymore. You don't. If we didn't have a democracy, we wouldn't have people like Bernie or AOC or anyone in the squad in office right now. If things were as bad as they used to be, they wouldn't have ever been able to run for office, much less gain any position of power that they have, however small that may be. 
to say otherwise is to diminish everything they've done, to deny the reality of the progress we made and the ability to uh, run for and gain and hold political office now. Because I'm sure you've all seen it, if, or if you haven't, you know what I mean? These, uh, the squad, by and large, has been outspent 10 to 1 by both Democrats, uh, you know, uh, centrist, you know, uh, establishment Democrats and Republicans. And those them and those in the squad, they win every time in landslides, despite being outspent 10 to 1. Because the, the money doesn't win anymore. Now we can have working class representatives that has a strong, loyal base of supporters that keep them in office every time. If that wasn't the case, if that wasn't real, we wouldn't be here right now. We wouldn't have what we are, what we have. And again, to say otherwise is just revisionist nonsense. It's lazy bullshit, and we shouldn't be entertaining it. So that's what I mean, you know, when I say all of that. It's just when I say it's lazy, defeatist bullshit, that is not at all an accurate uh, assessment of our political system, of our you know, politics, society, and culture. Because much of that has changed. Like, I'm not even talking about the culture. You know what I mean? I'm just talking specifically our political system. Talking about the culture is a whole other thing. But I digress. Let's go on. His next point was about, uh, you know, effectively, his, what he's saying is like, why should we care about the capital being sacked? Because the capital just, where all the, the worst people do the worst things and implement all the horrible policies that we hate. So why the fuck should we care anyways? Why is that really, a, why, why does that matter? What difference does it make? Again, going back to what I said, to, to think like that is to effectively deny the existence of the progress we've made and why all of that matters. Why all of what we've done, what, 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 of the gains we've made up to this point matters from social uh, issues like uh, the legalization of gay marriage, the progressive legalization of marijuana throughout the throughout the states. Now, obviously, we're not there on the federal level yet, but we're getting there because hell, the House legalized it for the first time ever. Um, the increase of overtime payment, uh, overtime pay, like the the threshold of people who can receive overtime, all these things. To say that it doesn't matter is to say that all the gains we've made up to this point don't matter or didn't happen. Because if you because if you can't see the world of difference between of governance between, say, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, then you don't want to see it. I do not deny the problems with the Democratic Party. I'm going to pretend that you, you won't catch that here. But a good question I like to ask people like this is, do you think the Democrats would have, any of the Democrats would have handled the pandemic in the same way Trump did? If you say yes, then you're full of shit. You are lying to yourself and you want to just believe that their parties are both the same and nothing matters. You want to believe that. And that is absolute bullshit. Because the Democrats, for all their flaws, at a bare minimum, at a bare minimum, it is, as far as, uh, as much as they can interpret, of course, will do what needs to be done. Not relying on magical thinking or denying a virus that is, you won't, there's no Democratic Party equivalent to the absolute delusional, conspiratorial, detached from reality bullshit that's on the right I'm, there isn't you can try to pull russia gate or some other shit but it's it's not comparable it's still not comparable because the democrats from the from day one were acknowledging the virus the threat it posed and what needed to be done from day one from the top down but the republicans still to this day 
are calling the virus a hoax. To this day, 350 some thousand people dead later, still denying how bad it is and that the virus even exists. So if you can't see the difference of how things would play out if the insurrection was a success and the Republicans effectively established themselves as a dictator, like as, you know, a dictatorship overthrow our incredibly flawed democracy to keep themselves in power. If you can't see the difference in how our country would would further be handled at both the, the, the local, state, national, international level, I don't know what to fucking tell you. I don't. I really don't know what to tell you. I don't know because I know a, a common argument on the left is like, you know, that Trump wasn't as bad as Obama as far as foreign policy goes. And that's absolute bullshit because Trump bombed even more than, uh, than Obama did. Trump's foreign policy is even worse than Obama's was. Trump wasn't no dove. I know y'all wanted to believe that. I really know y'all wanted to believe that, but it's not true. He wasn't no dove. He was a, he was substantially fucking worse. I know you want to argue with the the K the kids in cages at the border and all that. Oh, you know the, they were already there before Trump. Yeah, you know, Obama did all that. Or Obama expanded what Bush did. Yeah, but Trump cranked it up even fucking worse. Again, y'all refusing to accept that. That's on you. You don't want to believe. In the difference between them. You want to believe it's all the same. It's all bad. It doesn't make a difference. It, But it fucking does. And the reason I think you're, you're like that is because you've lost the plot. We don't have the power to save everybody, but we save who the fuck we can. Even if it's just one person, that's better than fucking nothing. So if working with the Democrats gives us, uh, if, if it's uh, the choice between the Republicans who will kill everyone and the Democrats who will only kill a thousand, I'm choosing the Democrats every fucking time. Because the goal is to save any and everyone we can. To gain every inch of progress we gain, every life we can save, and in any way that we can make things better, you fucking take it. So this idea, effectively, that there's no difference between them and that this uh, sacking of the Capitol didn't really, it didn't really matter. We should, you know, what, what difference does it make? Why should we care? You should care because it does matter who's in charge. It does matter who's running the show. Because, yeah, though capitalism is, uh, is definitely a problem and how it's manifested, I can promise you would have been a thousand times worse. And if you don't see that, then that's on fucking you. You don't want to see it. Next point he made was effectively that neoliberalism, neoliberalism came for the, you know, for the wealthy white people. Because it already came for the poor white people, but it came for the wealthy white people, and that's why... This all happened, essentially. But that's not true. If you look into the people who stormed the Capitol, who was a part of this, who led the charge, who incited and led the charge, or was a part of this insurrection, it was all wealthy people whose motivations were not necessarily their, uh, their bank accounts, more or less. It was some delusional conspiratorial nonsense. Their motivations... And by and large, we're completely detached from reality. Completely, utterly detached from reality. Everything that these people have, you, you look at any interview, any question that these people have to answer, their, their motivations are not grounded in reality or any kind of working class solidarity or uh, wealthy you know, middle class solidarity. No, it was grounded in conspiratorial fucking nonsense. Neoliberalism didn't come for them. Right-wing media came for them. Right-wing media, Donald Trump, all the bullshit they've been fed, QAnon, all that, that came for them. That fueled them. That motivated them. And you say that they can essentially, you know, mobilize to effectively uh, challenge capitalism. Well, 
I beg to differ. Not necessarily in that they'd have effectively challenged capitalism, but they definitely would have accelerated us to some very even increasingly worse versions of capitalism. The next one he point, uh, point, uh, highlighted was that you know, he said the GOP will never accept any close election going forward. Oh, no, I don't doubt that. That one is true. I am of the assessment that the GOP is electorally fucked, but what they're going to do is hunker down and try to, crack, you know, to, to crank up the voter suppression tactics and resort to this fucking conspiratorial bullshit to try to always keep themselves in power. They go, they, they're just going to take the Trump playbook and roll with it to stay in power no matter what. How we fight that is how, you know what I mean, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But that is absolutely the case for sure. But, again, going back to the next one, where he tries to say essentially it's just Bush v. Gore again. But even, even with that, it didn't matter. It, didn't, it, didn't, it wouldn't have mattered if, essentially that if, if, Gore, if Al Gore won, that all of this didn't really matter. None of this matter. And them doing that, again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything. And the results have been varying degrees of the same regard. Because that, that's the foundation of what's being argued here. And again, it's bullshit. I'm not going to repeat myself as to why. But the idea that it doesn't matter, that the dis, that these distinctions between the two parties and who's running the show doesn't matter, the idea of that is bullshit. The Dems will become a regional party, most likely as a result of the whole GOP with the bullshit they're gonna, definitely going to crank up on. Uh, I disagree with that idea. Like, if the Dems were able to take Georgia... We can take the other states, for sure. It's an uphill battle, for sure. <laughs> it's an absolutely uphill battle in every sense of the word. And maybe I'm just too optimistic in, Dem in the Democrats reckoning with how the piss-poor 2020 performance at the state and local level of them make a, having a reckoning with that on the, the, their strategies going forward. But... I think the reckoning is happening, and I, especially in the wake of that insurrection, and I think there's going to be a lot of changes in our favor. Well, provided we play our cards right and keep the pressure on. Why is it essentially, because he, he has said it brought somebody asking, like, why is it bad to call the insurrection, the insurrection terrorism? He says he's, he's effectively, as when he's already arguing that, he tried to bring up effectively, you know, the, the Patriot Act, you know, had bipartisan support and how everything we used to do, all the bullshit we used to justify uh, invading Iraq and Afghanistan. And that come, that now coming home, that same apparatus being used at home against uh, non-white people and Muslims and all that. Um, effectively arguing that it, again, there is no difference. It doesn't matter. You can't call it terrorism because it, it's just... You, again, you have to accept the foundational, the foundation of bullshit I've laid out earlier that you have to believe in. But no, that was terrorism. That was domestic terrorism. That was a threat to America as a whole, to America's national security uh, and domestic security. Or national and international security. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. That was absolutely an act of terror. You may not like our politicians, but what is happening is, is absolutely terrorism. Attempts on the lives of our elected officials of our government is absolutely terrorism, whether you like them or not. How our government goes about handling that and social media you know, goes about handling that I've already laid out in a prior video with regards to my assessment of the insurrection what's, and uh, what's to come going forward. You can watch that video uh, after this one if you'd, be so, if you'd be so inclined to do so. And yeah, America will become more of a police state and surveillance state. We're gonna crank it up using this and what happened, the insurrection as a justification. It's a toss up on that one, honestly. Because yes, that could happen. Uh, 
It absolutely could be the case that could they could roll with this and make things more more of a surveillance state, even if it's just even if it's against rightfully against the people who uh, incited and uh, participated in and led the charge of this of the insurrection against the U.S. government. It's still bad to crank it up because ultimately it ends up getting to justify itself. It starts, you know, going after anyone and everyone it can. But there's been a lot of pushback against that, even in the mainstream media, pushback against that idea, because we already have laws in the books that's more than sufficient to prevent this from ever happening again. We already have the means and measures to preventing this from happening again. The problem is the, is the need to reckon with why this happened. Instead of cranking up the security, instead we need to reckon with why this happened, clean house from the top down, and ensure this never happens again without increasing our already... Uh, overblown surveillance state. I believe we can do that, and I believe there's a, a significant push to to do that. You know, to prevent it from going uh, any further than it already has. Will it succeed? Again, that's only time will tell. I think it'll help definitely to keep the pressure on, rather than just saying, "Oh, it will happen." So whatever, you know. What I mean, just throwing your fucking hands up and saying, this, "Effectively, there's no hope. There's no stopping it. There's nothing we can do." And that, you know, capitalism is going to grind you up and you, most of you are going to become peasants. And that's the last thing I want to say to, to all of you on this one, to the defeatist left. Fuck you. You want to give up, say there's no hope. We can't stop this. There's nothing we can change. The scale is too great and we'll never be organized enough. We'll never be uh, able to prevent things from getting worse. You want to give up, go wallow in some fucking corner somewhere. I'm not entertaining it. I've made a video on this before and I'll say it again. I'm not fucking entertaining it. I'm a jaded motherfucker. I've come close. I, I've... I, been pushed over the edge and brought back thanks to the, the help of my close friends. But you have to look at the bigger picture. Every inch we gain, every bit of progress that happens is a win. It's something to be celebrated. Every single thing, be it social, uh, or political, you know, or, you know, economic, national, international, every inch we fucking gain, every life we save is a win and something to be celebrated. Don't lose sight of that because that's what we're in this game for, right? I like, I like to hope so because my goal is to keep you, is to keep people informed, to challenge perspectives, to push us in the right direction and keep you guys fighting the good fight and helping anyone and everybody you can to keep your eyes on the ball. Because that's what we're here for, right? That's what all of this is about. So I'm not entertaining this nihilistic, defeatist bullshit. I'm not. If you want to give up, go, go, go the fuck somewhere else. You take your fucking edgy, uh, irony poison, defeatist, not bullshit somewhere else. Laugh as the world burns. Having you, as you, you saved no one, but you know, you just accepted the futility of your own existence, so fuck it, you know, what's the point? Fuck that. I say if it's all point, if it's all inevitably gonna end in us all dead anyways, well, I'm gonna go down swinging. I'm gonna go down trying to save who I can. I'm gonna go down trying to do the best I can, help who I can. Because I'd rather go down that way than go down having fucking already as a, already dead having already just given up fuck that and fuck all of you who and continue to stoke that disillusionment that discontentment that defeatism that nihilism you think it's cool you think you're fucking smart you think you're you think you've got it all figured out no the fuck you don't because if people like you We're the ones in the past, a part of the civil rights movement, suffrage movement, labor rights and all that. Y'all, they'd have lost. Nothing would have changed. We'd have made no fucking progress. 
Quitters don't change anything. You just watch the world burn down around you. And hey, if that's what we, if that's your, if that's you, that's when you know gets you off. You know, fuck, by all means, you know, by all fucking means, just stay the fuck out of my sight. I don't want to see you. I'm sure some of you think to me, say to me that I'm just that I'm being mean to people who are rightfully jaded and pessimistic and, and, and feeling hopeless and powerless. I don't have. I'm sorry. I don't have uh, much niceness to give you on this one. I'm sorry. I have no patience for it anymore. I've seen it too much, and y'all seen the relish in it. So I've lost patience for that shit. You're not powerless. There's always something you can do. There's always someone you can help. Down to the lowest level. Remember a quote I heard. I will leave you all with this. A quote I heard. Think globally. Act locally. It's good to be aware of everything going on on the national and international level, but your prerogative, your focus should be at the local level. Help who you can change what you can do, what you can at the local level. That's why I do what I do with the Habitat for Humanity. I encourage you all to do the same. I'll leave you with that. That's all I got. Y'all take care.